Hi, I'm Wes Kim, board president of Seattle Per Musica, and on behalf of the singers, staff, and board, I'd like to welcome you to the last of our Choral Tapas virtual concerts. We've got music coming your way from Felix Mendelssohn and Josef Reinberger, the Pacific Northwest premiere of Welcome Table by Sondra Choi, and tasty food and drink recipes from Seattle Cucina and our own Katie Scovold. Before we begin, a couple of announcements. First, we would like to acknowledge that the land we live, work, and play on is the original land of the Duwamish tribe, the first people of Seattle. We offer our gratitude to both the land and its people, and we encourage you to learn more about the tribe at duwamishtribe.org. Second, in honor of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, the board and staff of Seattle Per Musica have elected to donate all proceeds from today's concert to the Pacific Islander Community Association. A local organization, PICA, seeks to live out the indigenous values of the Pacifica communities here in Washington State. They do this through community organizing, speaking their truth fiercely to systems of power, and providing social supports and cultural spaces for the community to gather and center their values. You can learn more about their work at PICAWA.org, and we hope you'll join us in supporting them by making a donation during today's concert. Thanks again for tuning in today. And now, please welcome the recent recipient of an honorary doctorate in music from University of Puget Sound, Dr. Karen P. Thomas. Hello, and welcome back to our Choral Tapas series. I'm Karen Thomas, Artistic Director of Seattle Per Musica, welcoming you to our newest bite-sized concert featuring music, snacks, and beverages. The recipes for today's show were posted on our Facebook page and website, so you can cook, stir, or shake along with us. Today we'll enjoy music by Mendelssohn, Reinberger, and by contemporary composer Sander Choi. Starting us off today, we take a look into Seattle Per Musica's history with a video of a live performance from 2009 of Mendelssohn's Oratorio Elijah. We performed this at St. James Cathedral in Seattle. And here to introduce this movement from Mendelssohn's Elijah is Seattle Per Musica alum Ginger Ellingson. Hi, my name is Ginger Ellingson, and I sang soprano with Seattle Pro Musica from 2007 through 2011. During this time, my favorite musical memories were singing the masterwork concerts that Karen programmed for the choir, one of them being Mendelssohn's Elijah from 2009, which you will get to hear today. In Elijah, the choir acts as a Greek chorus with many voices joining together into one collective voice that comments on the dramatic story that's unfolding. Choir and creating collective voice has always added value to my life through making music, but more importantly, through being a part of something bigger and beyond myself. The pandemic has presented unique challenges to the performing arts community, but also a chance for us to reflect on the value of community and being a part of organizations and movements beyond oneself. Thank you so much for this opportunity to revisit my memories from Seattle Pro Musica, to reaffirm my commitment to creating community and the performing arts. And I hope that you enjoy this performance of Mendelssohn's Elijah.
Hi there. My name is Katie Scobalt. I'm the executive director of Seattle Pro Musica, and I'd like to make you a cocktail. I'd specifically like to make you a cocktail, Peter Hemmen, because you won this in the Seattle Pro Musica auction last month, and I am very grateful. So this is the Ad Astra for Peter Hemmen. The Ad Astra came out of conversations that Peter and I had after the auction, where he was thinking about the connections between a choral odyssey and space. And he wanted a cocktail that had a nod to the space race days of the late 50s, early 60s, sort of a John Glenn, the right stuff, Cape Canaveral thing, and he suggested that we use rye. So we decided to go with a smoked, old-fashioned rye cocktail. What that means is we're using the old-fashioned template. We are adjusting it slightly to give it a citrus punch, and then we are smoking it. There are two ways to smoke this cocktail, and I'm gonna demonstrate both of them today. The more perhaps accessible one is to rinse your glass with a smoky scotch and you get a smoke forward uh, taste there. The other is to use a contraption, a smoking gun, which you can purchase on the internet. You can start at smile.amazon.com and help us take a few of those Bezos bucks uh, by supporting Seattle Pro Musica or any of your favorite local nonprofits through smile.amazon.com uh, or by local. Let's make the cocktail because the cocktail itself is the same whether you rinse your glass with scotch or rinse your glass with smoke. Start by preparing your garnish. Your garnish also helps you to get one of the ingredients for your cocktail this time around, which is cool. Orange. I've got this lovely navel orange. I've already uh, sliced into it. That is pretty. And then you'll want about a half an ounce of juice. Don't use that part. I've removed the offensive parts of my orange and got a fresh knife and fresh cutting board. Ooh. You want approximately a half ounce of juice for this. Fresh citrus is so variable in its tart to sweet ratio that you're gonna wanna be able to adjust, add more simple syrup, add more orange juice, that sort of thing. So we're gonna start with a half an ounce of orange juice and go from there. One second ago where I showed you how that orange was so beautiful looking and then on the inside it was all nasty and rotten. People can be like that too. But half an ounce. Your garnish you need now. You're gonna want a fancy cherry for this. Don't use any of those nonsense uh, electric red cherries. Use something nice like a Luxardo. But I went with the swanky cherry and the orange slice as a nod to the old, old fashioned. I've got a toothpick. I'm gonna go in through the rim of this orange slice. Stab my cherry onto the, what? Oh. Stab my cherry onto the pick. And then I'm gonna swing this back around. Right there. So we've got like a little cherry taco, effectively. That can go to this side now. Not very far to the side, just right here. The rest of the cocktail will be built in this mixing glass. We've got our half ounce of orange juice. Orange bitters. Two, three dashes. And then simple syrup. I have orange simple syrup left over from... So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. A little less than a teaspoon of it. Bar spoon is good too. Um, because again, you're gonna taste. So start smaller on your sweetness because you can always amp that up. And then two whole ounces of rye whiskey. I'm using James E. Pepper 1776 100 proof straight rye whiskey. You can use any rye that you like. 100 proof is not necessary, it just is what I have. So, all right, into your glass. And now it will shock you to learn that we'll be stirring this for 20 seconds. Next step is to taste, because this is the point at which you can adjust your cocktail for sweetness, tartness, etc. Needs a tiny bit more sweetness. 
You don't have to do the whole 20 seconds after you add one new thing. Remember the 20 seconds is for dilution, not for actually combining the ingredients. Yep, that's her. All right. So option one, scotch rinse. Actually, probably should have done this before mixing this cocktail. So just so it doesn't get further diluted because we are serving it over an ice cube, I'm gonna decant this into a jar. And I'm gonna double strainer because of the pulp factor in this fresh orange juice. There we go. She's decanted. She can no longer further dilute. Also, she's gorgeous. Look at that color. It's practically glowing. It's so lovely. So if you're going to serve this with a scotch rinse in your glass, you're gonna want a scotch. Something like Lagavulin or Ardbeg or Lafrag, something with some smoke to it because that's the point of using scotch. Don't use something like a Macallan or an Edredauer because those are too subtle for this those are too subtle for this particular drink. The point is to add that smoke, right? You know, like uh, rocket fuel. No, um, like the cigars that the control room technicians would smoke after a successful mission was completed. Got it. Let's scotch rinse this glass. You only really need like a bar spoon's worth of this uh, to really coat the inside of your whole glass. So here we go. Any more than that, it's become more of an ingredient and less a note. And we're really celebrating the citrus and the rye here, so. You put it into your glass. It's really not very much, just a little teensy bit. And tilt your glass so that it comes up the side, not all the way to the rim, and then begin to turn. You should see, <gasps> scotch down. Okay, so it's still got a little bit of scotch in there, not enough to you know massively affect the drink overall. So your glass is prepared. I'm gonna serve this with one very large ice cube. Decant your cocktail straight in there. And add your garnish. Burp. There you are. That's your scotch rinsed version of the Ad Astra, a citrus forward rye old fashioned. It's really, ah, oh, I love an old fashioned. I am partial to drinks like this. This one is very, very good. So, Let's do the version where we smoke it. There is a contraption, this contraption, called the smoking gun. This one is uh, the fancy one, loaned to me by one Jenny Spence. Hello, Jenny, thank you so much. I've got some food safe apple wood chips. You can use any wood that you like that is food safe. Make sure you get food safe stuff. As always with fire, you need to be very careful. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher and a source of water nearby. But let's do this thing. So I've got my decanted cocktail in a jar. I've got the lid for that jar here uh, so that I can seal the smoke in. Here's the fun. Okay, here we go. You can see there's smoke coming, smoke coming out of here. Mm -hmm. Into the jar with the smoke. You can see. If you don't have a jar, you can also just do this right into a <laughs> right into a, a glass and put a coaster on top. Hmm. Make sure it is in fact sealed. And then you can gently invert it and increase the surface area that has contact with the smoke. This is useful if you really like that smoky flavor. You can let this sit for a while and continue to infuse if you like it smoke smoky. Make sure you blow this out and also rinse it under water before you throw it, throw it away because we don't need household fire incidents. Thank you. A fresh ice cube, your garnish, cherry taco, and your smoked cocktail. Cheers.
the Ad Astra, Peter Hammond, and to you, audiences of Coral Tapas, we are very grateful for uh, continuing to attend these events, for enjoying our company and our presence, for leaving such nice comments. Peter's nice comments, always appreciated. And this is our last Coral Tapas for this season. Doesn't mean we won't be sharing new and extraordinary things with you via our YouTube channel in the not too distant future. So please, if you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Come and join us for the bright, shiny future. And uh, I'll see you then. To you, to the stars. Thank you, Peter. Cheers. Thank you, Katie. That is some smoky deliciousness. Our next piece is Welcome Table by Sander Choi, a Los Angeles-based Filipino composer. Seattle Permusica was one of the co-commissioners of this piece, and we are delighted to share it with you today. Sander Choi's works have been commissioned and performed by choirs around the world. As an orchestrator and arranger, he has composed for Tony Award winner Lea Salanga, and the Singapore Symphony Orchestra, among many others. As a tenor, he performed on the live-action remakes of Disney's Mulan and The Lion King. About Welcome Table, Sander writes, As a BIPOC gay immigrant, I often wonder if I will ever be truly welcome in this country. Tensions surrounding immigration are at an all-time high, with mothers being separated from their kids, children in detention cells, visa bans, even legal immigrant status is threatened. Welcome Table is inspired by and reflects on the civil rights spiritual, I'm gonna sit at the welcome table, examining it from the eyes of an immigrant. Perhaps one of these days, we will all be welcome at the table. Now, before we hear Welcome Table, one of our singers, Liz Langland, shares a personal reflection. Hello, I'm Liz Langland and I've sung with Seattle Pro Musica for 24 years now. I'm so pleased to help introduce The Welcome Table with words and music written by Sonder Choi. When I first heard and sang through the song, I was immediately captivated. It represents so much of what I strongly believe and hope for the vision of our society. It's the song of an immigrant asking, am I welcome? Am I welcome to sit and eat and drink with you? Am I able to dream with you, hope and love with you? Questions started flooding into my thoughts like, who is welcome in our society? Who do I welcome at my table? It reminds me of the saying, when you have more than you need, build a longer table, not a higher wall. I imagine the scene of a long and winding, lavishly set table with enough places for anyone who wants to join in. Now please enjoy The Welcome Table, featuring tenor soloist Kaylee Bolmy.
I welcome? Perhaps one of these days. Am I welcome to sit at the table and eat with you, drink with you, feast on milk and honey? The singers and I recently got to speak with Sander Choi at a Zoom rehearsal. We loved getting to know him, and with his permission, we'd like to share some of that interview with you. And there he is. I see his picture. I see his waving hand. Hey, Sander, Hi. how are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so oh, excited. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It is re it's just such a pleasure to to see you and, you know, get a chance to, to chat with you and have the choir get to know you a little bit. So, so welcome. so nice to be here. And thank you for co-commissioning Welcome Table. What oh. a joy to be able yeah. to work with Seattle Pro Musica. So I grew up in the Philippines. I used to sing with the Philippine Madrigal Singers for five years. And my introduction to writing choral music was actually pop arranging. Um, in high school, I listened to a lot of King singers and Swingle singers. So I have that sort of like Anglican pop choral sound in my ear. But when I came here first, I studied my, I did my undergrad in Berkeley College of Music in Boston. So pretty much um, lots of popular music and jazz influences there and film scoring influences. And then I eventually did my master's in composition at USC. I've also been singing since I was seven. I suppose I was a singer first um, mm -hmm. before I was a composer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, sort of, that's sort of my journey. To put this piece in context, there are a couple of things that you need to know about me. Um, one is my, one of my main jobs here in Southern California is I'm the director of music at a Unitarian Universalist church, but it's a very inclusive, all encompassing um, religion where we make a concerted effort to really value everyone regardless of their religious beliefs. And so one of the hymns in our hymnal is I'm gonna sit at the welcome table, which is a gospel spiritual, I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. The second thing that you have to know uh, about this is this was um, the impetus for this piece was something that Trump did in 2019 he imposed something called the public charge rule, um, which basically told uh, immigrants or people who are on the pathway to legal citizenship, they basically told us at that time, including me, um, that we can't um, participate in any, any public benefits. And so when that happened in 2019, and we had I'm going to sit at the welcome table program for one of those Sundays, it really, uh, I started to reflect on it in the eyes of an immigrant, sort of like, oh, will we ever be welcome here? Really? What will it take? What is, what is enough? You know, because even green card holders, some of them get, get their green cards revoked even citizens who are uh, Black, Indigenous people of color get questioned for their citizenship. Um, even people who are born here, if you're, if you're a minority, you, you get questioned. So I think that 
at the heart of the piece, that's what the piece is about is when is enough enough? You know, when, when do we reach the passing grade in order to be fully accepted? One of the main things is being kind to immigrants, particularly new immigrants or particularly immigrants who have been put in a difficult situation, whether they be undocumented, for example, or um, if they are on a pathway to legal citizenship, just being very understanding about it. But also in the bigger scheme of things, I suppose supporting um, public officials who have a pathway forward. I guess one of the things that I want people to understand is no one wants to be illegal. Uh, having no papers and no documents in this country is extremely difficult to find work and to rent some place to live and to get social security and to get a driver's license, for example. It's just, it's, it's, it's very difficult to be undocumented here. It was a really cathartic experience for me to write this piece too, especially when you're sort of in that in-between where you don't know how to be, you don't know where your future is. Like, should I invest in my future here? Should I buy a house here? Should I uh, buy a car? Should I, whatever. When is the end happening? Like when we when do we find that soft place to land? You know, if if you are a green card holder, permanent residence, and you and they still have the means to revoke it from you after, you know, working so hard on something and spending so much money in something like that, it's just I feel like it's unfair. In terms of work. Um, original words, I try to focus on, of course, messages that mean a lot to me. Um, and a lot of those are uh, stuff that we have to deal with, sort of current stories. I'm less becoming less and less interested in programming as a, as a music director. I'm becoming less and less interested in programming things that um, don't apply to us directly. I am finding more and more nowadays that I fail to connect with the text as a musician, as a singer, or as a music director um, interpreting it. And so I try to um, not really write like that. Uh, or if, if I were to choose text by someone who's, who's dead, um, it should be something that is that could easily be recontextualized into our current stories. I don't know if I have a dream text necessarily, um, but I do have a dream environment where um, sort of BIPOC artists are not limited to people's expectations of them. Like a lot of the times you expect, you know, black composers to just compose spirituals or just compose like anti-racism texts or, but, but there's a lot of nuance in that. The same way that white people can compose about like a 360 view of the world, um, Black Indigenous people of color are also capable of these things. And I think we're getting closer to that, don't you agree? I think now that the conversation is on the table, um, people are actively, you know, giving that space to, to other, other folks to just have the same nuanced 360 degree worldview that's capable of of any form of thinking. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us and, and talk to the choir. And thank you for your wonderful piece, which we love. Thanks again for having me. It's such a great opportunity to share stories with all of you. 
thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll look forward to getting in touch again soon sometime. All right. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, Sandra. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Hi, I'm Katie Scobalt. I'm the executive director of Seattle Pro Musica, and I'm here to remind you that in honor of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, the board and staff of Seattle Pro Musica have elected to donate all proceeds from today's Coral Tapas concert to the Pacific Islander Community Association. We hope you will join us in support of their excellent work by making a contribution during today's virtual concert. To do so, you can visit seattlepromusica.org slash donate, or you can text SPMPICA to the number 44321. Again, that's SPMPICA to the number 44321. We at Seattle Pro Musica are blessed and grateful and humbled to have such a generous community filled with folks who honor and celebrate the nonprofits doing important work around us. Thank you for your ongoing support. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our final rendition of our Coral Tapas cooking demonstration. Once again, my name is Erica, coming from Seattle Cucina Cooking School, and it is with great pleasure I'll be walking you through how to make churros from scratch, and then also a Spanish sipping chocolate. What better way to end things than with something sweet and delicious. Unlike Latin American churros, these do not have cinnamon. By all means, go loco with the cinnamon. I strongly encourage it. In Spain, churros are often eaten during merienda, which is just a delightful phenomenon. It's a breakfast snack also known as 11Zs or second breakfast for any of you Hop It fans out there. So I hope you have some fun with these and let's do it, let's get going. Make sure you either have your oven preheating at 400 or that pan full of oil already starting to heat over about medium, medium low as you're making your batter. Keep an eye on it, you know, make sure things don't get too crazy, but let's make our batter. This is a very simple and quick batter. It's very similar to something called pâte à choux, which is a French batter used to make things like eclairs, cream puffs, cheese puffs, that kind of thing. It puffs up. In a saucepan, we're adding our water, oil, and salt and sugar. It's just like crazy how few ingredients this has. Go ahead and cover that. We want to bring it to a boil. Flour, baking powder. Still not boiling. While we wait, we're gonna set up our piping situation. I strongly recommend piping with a bag of some kind, right? An actual piping bag, or you can use a gallon Ziploc. I'll also show you how to just do the old fashioned scooper method. Um, and even better, I'm cutting my bag ahead of time because I have a star a piping tip to fill either a Ziploc or piping bag. I like to crunch it down into a big, like, this is a Tupperware or a cup or something. Oh, and look at that. It's a boiling. And as soon as it's pretty smooth, think mashed potatoes. I'm gonna show you the baking method first, which is, oh, so simple. It's gonna be still pretty hot, so you may need to use like a towel to help you, but we don't wanna wait too long. And then we are just piping out. Kinda make it nice and even, and then plop it onto your tray. And if you're feeling it, you can shape them a little bit more. They need more time. Give them more time. These are looking beautiful. But I found if you bake churros, the best sweetener to use would be a nice drizzling of honey. Ooh. Now we come to the frying part. We have reached 
a good heat, I would say. And get a large platter or sheet tray or whatever. Line it with paper towels. Let's get a close up, shall we? What you're gonna do is you're gonna pipe this very carefully. And then if you need to stop it, you can cut it with a knife or scissors. It's time, that's a good golden brown. Do not take it out if it's paler because it might not be cooked in the middle. All right, it is Spanish drinking chocolate time. Let's talk ingredients real quick. We want that six ounces of dark chocolate. Use whatever percentage you'd like, and I've chopped it up nice and fine. I strongly recommend using bars over chips in terms of chocolate, but in a pinch, chips will do great, so follow your heart. And then the recipe uh, calls for whole milk. Use whatever milk you'd like. So we're adding our milk to a pan over medium heat. We're gonna then remove about a teaspoon of this milk and mix it with a scant teaspoon of cornstarch. This is going to thicken our drinking chocolate so it is that thick, rich kind of consistency where it feels like it's just melted chocolate that you're sipping on. It's not, right? There's a lot of milk going on, but uh, science, you know, cornstarch is amazing. And then now is the time to add a little bit of sugar. You can use honey, agave, whatever sweetener you'd like. and then we're whisking. So this needs to reach a nice simmer, and then we're gonna let it go for an additional minute of just gently simmering, adjusting your heat as needed, and whisking, and then we're good to add our chocolate. I'm now gonna turn my heat off, and then I'm adding all of my chocolate. Now you're gonna add a teeny pinch of cayenne, if that is your jam. Taste, taste, taste. It's like Swiss Miss hot chocolate, met chocolate pudding and chocolate mousse, and uh, made a wonderful, beautiful, warm drink out of that meeting. I feel like I want to do the tall pour. We got our fried, we got our baked. We got our sipping chocolate. Definitely how I recommend eating them. You dip. I feel so fortunate to be able to both sing with Seattle Par Musica and then cook uh, these amazing dishes. Food and music really do feed the soul, figuratively speaking, but also a little literally. And what greater comfort than to have this food and drink and music all in one place where we can all come together um, and celebrate the, the wonderful things in life. So thank you again and enjoy the rest of the concert. Our next piece is Abendlied, or Evening Song, by Josef Reinberger. He wrote this piece when he was only 15 years old and then revised it at the age of 24. It is probably his best known sacred work and it is beloved by singers everywhere. Before we hear it, here is one of our singers, Aaron Gabriel, with some personal words. Hello, my name is Aaron Gabriel and I've been singing soprano with Seattle Pro Musica since 2014. For the world of choral music, the pandemic threw us into disarray almost immediately, and we've been slowly trying to catch our breath ever since. It has been a time of great loss, and it's also been a time of great gratitude and growth. This time away from singing, while it's been very difficult, has also provided an opportunity for us to look deeply and consider what we do, how we do it, and how we will move forward. 
We've learned just how much we appreciate one another, the music we create together, and even just the sound of our voices in the same room, whether that be talking, laughing, singing, or even crying. We've longed for the seemingly simplest of things, just an evening to be together and hear our voices in real time. Our next and final piece for this evening is Josef Reinberger's Abendlied, Evening Song. The beauty and simplicity of the vocal line, the ability to hear the different smaller groups of voices singing throughout the piece is what I love most. It's really simple. This is not just beauty for the listener, but it is beauty for the singer as well. And as you listen, perhaps you can hear the picture being painted as we sing. Stay with us for the evening shadows darken and the day will soon be over.
A reminder that any financial support received during tonight's Coral Tapas will be given to the Pacific Islander Community Association. Thank you for your support. You can also support Seattle Pro Musica by liking this video, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and sharing our content with others. It makes such a difference. Plus, if you are subscribed to this YouTube channel and signed up for our newsletter at seattlepromusica.org, you will be the first to know when we've made our plans solid for this coming year. So, thank you again for all you do for us. Thank you so much for joining us for Coral Tapas. We have loved having this opportunity to stay connected with you during the year when we couldn't perform live. It's been a beautiful way to share the importance of music and singing to our singers and to our audiences everywhere. As the world begins its slow and careful return to live performance, we look forward to welcoming you back to our live concerts next season. In the meantime, we'll continue to share digital content this summer and into the future. I'd like to thank our Coral Tapas team, our audio engineers, Kevin Wyatt Stone and Bill Levy of Via Audio, video editor, Wes Kim, Seattle Kuchina co-owner, Erica Wiseman, Cocktail Maven, Katie Scoholt, and Seattle Per Musica's Operations and Administrative Associate, Joshua Gailey. Without them, we couldn't have produced these wonderful videos for you. And I especially thank all the singers of Seattle Per Musica who have spent the time recording themselves at home to make these possible. You'll be able to find information and many more videos on our website at seattlepermusica.org. I hope to see you live or digitally very soon. Cheers. I want to echo Karen's thanks to all of you and to all of the folks behind the scenes who made these events happen. What a wild ride it has been this year. Good night, everyone.